Hey everyone, my name is Travis McHenry and I am the creator of the Egyptian Star Oracle. Uh, one of the things I want to do as part of this Kickstarter campaign is release a series of videos that tell you a little bit more about my experiences being in Egypt, but also um, show you some of the cool stuff that I brought back from Egypt. And probably the coolest thing is this, <laughs> is this gigantic uh, series of canopic jars that is made of solid alabaster, weighs at least 60 pounds, um, and was extremely expensive. So canopic jars are, the name is sort of a misnomer. The word canopic is just the place where the very first set of jars was found in Egypt. Um, it's not even called canopic, uh, canopus anymore, it's now called abkir. But, um, so the very first set of jars was found there. There are four jars that are supposed to hold individual organs from the deceased in, uh, in mummies. And these jars take many different forms, uh, but the most common are the four children of Horus. So each jar has got some, and again, every jar, depending on the time period, I mean, these things were in use for over 2000 years. So the jars look a little different. Sometimes they're made from different materials, but, but this is sort of generally representative of what the jars look like and uh, you open them up, they're hollow inside. This is where the internal organ would be placed. And each of the four jars had a different organ inside. And I'll, I'll show you exactly which organ went in which jar and stuff like that in a minute. But so this is one of the jars. And this particular set I purchased came with a carrying box, which is not always how they were found in, in the tombs. Oftentimes, the, the jars would just be placed in the tomb separately and um, you know near the mummy or something like that. And uh, this was how they would be found, just sort of loose. This set that I purchased cost me an exorbitant amount of money. Um, it was uh, just over $3,000 uh, US. And to get them back into the country, to get them out of Egypt, I had to go through all kinds of uh, export control and um, they actually had the antiquities police there inspecting. They tore apart my entire, they were all wrapped up and, and you know, protected to, to be able to travel with them. And the, the in antiquities inspectors came in and ripped everything apart. The, the colonel came over and was trying to make jokes about how long this was gonna take. I didn't think it was funny at all. <laughs> so they tore every single piece apart, photographed them individually, sent the pictures back to the main office in Cairo and had to get approval for me to, to actually take them out of Luxor um, because they weren't sure that they were reproductions. And, and these aren't modern reproductions. By our standards, they're, they're antiques. These are just over 100 years old. But by Egyptian standards, that's still considered modern. Anything that's not thousands of years old to the, to the Egyptians' antiquities police. So you can see each of these is, is hollow and has a different head of one of the four uh, children of, of Horus. Each of these would have held one specific organ from inside the, the deceased. The, and each one represented a specific god. So this is a baboon head. It represents the god Happy. And Happy was responsible for protecting the lungs of the deceased. So just imagine somebody's mummified lungs stuffed into this, this jar. And next is Duamutaf, the jackal-headed god. And this god was responsible for protecting the stomach. Somebody's stomach crammed in there. Next is Imseti. Imseti was a human-headed god representing the south, and Imseti would have protected the liver. And finally, we've got Kebsinuf. Kebsinuf was a falcon-headed god representing the west, and their jar contained the intestine. So this is fairly representative of, of how big these jars would have been, but some jars were actually much larger. For example, uh, in King Tut's tomb, the, the jars in the Cairo Museum are, are enormous. They're like 
five times the size of these. They're really, really big. And they also came in a box like this in a, in a really cool, this is solid alabaster, by the way. And their piece of it just chipped off. Um, solid alabaster uh, jar to, or box to contain the, the jars. So I also bought this little canopic jar. It's much smaller, um, also made out of solid alabaster. I got this at the same place in Luxor that I purchased the large set. So these are a little more, actually, they're a lot more common. You can find these in almost any shop in Cairo. Uh, jars that are about this size. They may or may not be real alabaster. This one certainly is. And uh, But to find a full set like this, especially with the box made of alabaster, is, is virtually impossible. So if you, if you go to the alabaster factories in Luxor, you should have no problem discovering uh, things, really cool stuff like this. That's it, canopic jars of Egypt.